Hey, welcome to this special edition of Snowmobiler Television, because we're here at Snowshoot in West Yellowstone, Montana, riding a bunch of the 2020 model year sleds. So stick around, because we're about to get at it. STV is brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. Ford F-Series Canada's best selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. So Snowshoot is all about riding the next year's model sleds and we're here in West Yellowstone, Montana. We've got one more riding day left. We're having breakfast and uh, we're going to kind of talk about what's new for 2020. But Rich, how would you talk about Snowshoot when you're like to explain Snowshoot, what is it? Well, I've been coming here for over 20 years now, Jeff, probably like 28 not to age myself, but uh, <laughs> a few gray hairs, but it's been uh, it's a great spot. There's always snow in West Yellowstone. Um, and the manufacturers come out every year and they put out all their new hardware for us to ride and photograph, but yeah. they're prototypes. So you get it. They're, they're 80, pretty close though. Like yeah, they're, you get about 80% of the feeling, I would say. Not, there's room for error out here, so they can always yeah. make refinements and improvements before the consumer gets a snowmobile. Yeah, and this gives us a chance to ride everything so that when the embargo dates come and go, we're prepared with you know, the, the magazines and TV show stuff. Yep. And we've got all our stuff basically for pretty much most of the next year. Exactly, and I think there's gonna be a lot of shocked people next year when they find out what exactly is coming out. There's gonna be a lot of surprises and a lot of disappointments this year. Exactly, but uh, I mean, so far we've been having, uh, we're what, day, ride day six now for snowshoe. Yep. We're starting ride day six. That's right. Uh, so we've been on snow for five days, three of which have been pretty snowy. Like the snow conditions here are insane, right? Oh, I've never seen it like this. I think we've had like <laughs> three feet of snow in the last four days. Roads have been closed. They just opened up right here. So there's been a lot of crabby people, especially cameramen. Yeah, we've uh, had to wait for some of our guys to get here yep. because of closed roads. But uh, essentially, Snowshoot is all about you know this big media event, all four manufacturers, and with those guys here all in one place, it gives us a chance to you know ride not only experience the new sleds but ride them all back to back. So if we're riding one 850 against another, we can literally hop on, switch on the trail, and really get a feel of what these sleds are like. Yeah. Now, what are some of, uh, like, after being here, not getting into model specific stuff yet, but what are some of the, uh, you know, kind of the takeaways for model year 20 that uh, you're kind of thinking of, like well, first impressions? Myself, I, I, I ride in a, predominantly in Ontario, Quebec, upper state, uh, Minnesota, um, the UP, and I can't believe how they've gone towards more mountain and crossover snowmobiles. Like, it seems like, yeah, let's get to the longer tracks. And everything from you know the, the utility side of off-trail stuff all the way up to expert level uh, mountain stuff. But yep. one of the things that I've found is that all the models have really been kind of distilled down and focused into you know a specific type of terrain or rider. And I, I think you really got to be honest with yourself. And it doesn't matter what you are. If you're a ground and pound guy or a mountain guy, there's a sled out there for you. And I think you got to be honest with yourself as to which sled could be the best one for you. I think it's very confusing. <laughs> I'm a snowmobiler. I've been in the, this industry for a very long time, and I'm confused. Like, I want to be like, I want an XRS, I want an XCR, I want like an aggressive trail sled, yeah. so I know where I fit in. But then when I go off trail, I have no idea where I fit in because I think I know I'm not an expert mountain rider like uh, Tyler. Yeah. And I'm coming down the pipe. I don't know if I'm a free rider. I don't know if I'm a chaos guy. I don't know if I'm a riot. Where do I fit in? Yeah. So I'm listening to manufacturers and they're trying to tell me where I fit in. And I just disagree because I think I want a big shock package and I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to the trails. I, I, I spent a little bit of time, actually a lot of time on a, just a, an MXZ TNT and 
that thing was pretty good. Um, but <laughs> am I a TNT guy or am I a, like an XRS guy? I don't, I don't know. I like really like the way you focused on that TNT because a little when we were going down those flats and you started like just peeling away just, on that 850 just TNT. Just buy it. Yeah, and I was on another 850. It was pretty humiliating, let me tell you. Uh, it's 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 all the talent behind the bars, I think. That uh, I think that, you ran that, out, that, I ran out of talent. Yeah, I did it on willpower. Yeah, maybe you had a better line. I think it was yeah. No, I'm gonna go with willpower. <laughs> but uh, you know, not only with all these different models coming out and and these focused models, we've also got to talk about spring sales because a lot of these models are only available in, in the springtime, which is right now right so people got till you know the next 30 60 days to try to decide what they're gonna get and if they don't put their money down they ain't getting it well there's if you want the Patriot you an 850 Patriot you got your money down now but what about Articat if yeah. you put your money down by April you don't get an Articat which is shocking to me and I mean it's it's just complicating everything which uh, which is, is is great about this industry there's just so much refinement all the time but again, that's, uh, that has really distilled these models down into very specific ones. So uh, part of this talk and, and part of bringing the folks at home into our conversation here this morning is uh, to really help everybody figure out what's best for them. So coming up after the break, uh, we're gonna get into it with, uh, with Dan Scallop, the president of the Riders Union. Oh gosh, can't wait Stick for that. Stick around. All right, so welcome back to our model year 2020 review here in West Yellowstone. We've got Dan Scallop, who's uh, the president of our riders union. Uh, Dan, how long? How many years have you guys been coming to snowshoot together? It's been about 25, 26 yeah. years, and on in the trails together, chasing each other. <laughs> With, We're getting uh, old. Yeah, I mean, and you're kind of our, <laughs> our resident expert when it comes to you know, kind of really being able to try the different sleds and, and your feedback is key to what we talk about in the magazines and the TV shows. So what's kind of your your big thing for 2020 if you were to, you know, after riding everything for the last five days? After riding everything, I still prefer the higher end shock package stuff for pounding the trails. When the trails get rough, I love a great shock package on the sled. Doesn't matter what kind of sled you're on, I like the shock back. And, and that's your background too. You did a lot of cross country racing and you know factory racer for Articat and things like that. So we, let's talk, talk top of the line with uh, with the SRX. I mean, that thing's back this year, small refinement <coughs> with the front end, uh, arcs, front suspension. Uh, so they've basically raised the lower control arm up a little bit. So the roll, roll center is a bit better. I don't know about Dan, but when you're driving that down the straights, the low windshield, did you find that was a problem? I did, because it was like pulling me off the sled. Like, I'm not getting any stronger the older I get, but whole, the wind on these, these chests. These sleds are so fast. I mean, that just accelerates, and then having that wind pushing against you yeah. multiplies that effect. Yeah, so yeah. I was it, doing crunches. It just, it's like they're having a very crunches. soft seat in your car when you hit the accelerator. It just sets you back, and you feel like, holy cow, this thing's taking off like crazy. Yeah. That wind does the same thing to you. Yeah. Now, the SRX, I think, we talked about it last night. Oh, the color. The color. Uh, Why the don't black. you start with the color, Jeff? An SRX should be blue. That's, that's just me, an SRX needs to be blue. Pretty boy like Jeff. TV host I wants like blue, of course. I like the black. Exactly. I like the I think it's mean, it's going down the trail, the thing sounds mean, it should look mean. Yeah, it's, it's low it, to the ground. Sinister. You want to just clear the trail when you go through it. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you want to let you know, people, let people know that this is what just came through. It is pretty badass. Like, bowling ball. It, it should be black. It should, down it, they come, down the aisle, strike. Yeah. <laughs> So okay, so let's we, we can agree to disagree on that. I mean, uh, the black is uh, is pretty sweet when you yeah. see that thing coming down the trail. But so. I do agree. From a distance, the blue does look better. Yeah. It is like you can it stands out. The Yamaha Racing Blue, it does look great. So the the, the uh, IQS is super easy for people to, to kind of figure out. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got say the new Polaris um, uh, XCR, which is it's got those. The, you know, the Walker Airman's velocities on it, like high and low speed compression, like that's a pretty high end sled that we're talking with suspensions now. Well, when you say XCR combined with Indy, what do you think of? Winning. Racer. Yeah. It's a racer. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't get any. Cross country racer, that's yeah. the XCR, right? Yes. But, I mean, uh, it's got the Pro CC rear suspension in it now. That's one of the models. Um, and that thing is just a monster on the trail. So like that's where you set the bar, basically. When you're comparing sleds out there on the trail, it's, you kind of got to you, you go around that E50 Patriot as a benchmark, and the XCR, the shock package. It's kind of 
it, things are better out there. I'm not saying it's the best dam, but I'm gonna shake this head. But that's kind of like where the comparison lies. People start comparing it to that snow. Correct. Yeah. I'd be pretty happy with uh, with riding that XCR. I can tell you that that thing is is amazing. Um, but I think you have to be a smart rider to be able to deal with that shock package on there. If you if you it's super easy to get lost, and you could turn that into a great riding from a great riding sled into a crap can pretty easy by <laughs> making some turning Absolutely. the buttons the wrong. If you're way. looking at your buddy's sled saying, "Hey, what do you, what are you how are you adjusting your sled?" and you use that as your benchmark. You could be in left field and take that sled and just make it a terrible ride for you and then start to complain about it. Yeah. But you have to know what you're doing. You have to have that level of what, competency to be able to adjust it. Yeah. yeah. Know so what you, you're doing. You have or to have know a what friend you're doing. like Dan. Or have a friend like Dan. Exactly. <laughs> now, on the Skidoo side, I mean, uh, Skidoo's got their comparable model on Ground and Pound, which is the XRS. Um, lots of adjustability, but that thing is. is it's dialed in. I right was surprised away. this year on how great a snowmobile it was. But that 850, the XRS and the X package yeah. we had, when we were smoking down the trail, it was felt light. Like you're going on the corners where the XCR seemed a little more planter. Like you're coming in exactly. and you know what's going on. With an X XRS, you're kind of like, it's doing everything right. Nothing's going wrong, but it's very light. There's not a lot of feedback. It was just, it was just going through the bumps. I mean, yeah. it was eating up. The suspension was was felt soft yet. It did it everything. Was still firm. It was yeah, still, never, never had that never, spine tingling never, hit, never right? Come unhinged. It just. I feel confident. like that's going to be in my barn next year. Yeah, it was it's very good surprising how well calibrated that one was. Yeah. Now, Articat, you've got uh, the Riot, uh, with the normal one, which has got that laydown steering post in it, wider ski stance, and now the Riot X with that very vertical stand-up telescoping um, uh, handlebar system on it but narrow ski stance, and you can definitely feel they're directed to two different Major riders and, and areas to ride in, right? One works a lot better on the trail. If you're heading out, if you can spend most of your time on the trail before you get to your play area, one thing you better see there. Yeah. If, you're, if your play area is real close to where you unload your trailer, you may want to just look at that X and say, you know, it's all about playing with it. Yeah, so there's no more, it's not 50-50 anymore, really. No. Crossovers aren't 50-50, yep. you're like, 70% on trail, 30% off, or 30% on. It's just, it, it there's goes, no more 50-50. It goes back to that distilling down of each category into you know, a specific rider's needs and wants and a specific area that you're riding you just in. You gotta know what goes back to the confusion. You gotta no, know we, who you are. Yeah, is, is your hat flat? You know, that could have a, that could, <laughs> it's a flat brim hat. That could have a difference too, right? Just, <clears throat> just switch from, from crossover for a second and kind of go the other way before ground and pound to the sport utility stuff. That Expedition Extreme is, uh, it, it, obviously it's built to really knock on the door of the Polaris Titan, which surprised a lot of people a couple of years ago when it came out, surprised us. Yeah, I think it's pretty exciting though. When you can get on like a Titan or an Expedition, you go down that trail down, you can really like, you're hauling ass. Like those With things a, are fast. 20 I mean, inch You squeeze the throttle, it yeah. goes. Yeah. It just goes and you go like, wow, it's a surprise. I think it's a jump. real surprise, but how, it just goes down the they're, trail and through the bumps. They're fast. Yeah. And then you jump off trail, and the flotation on these things are just unbelievable. Go, go wherever you but want. I did watch Jeff, and he went down to Mother Earth on one of those things on the expedition. <laughs> but the saving <laughs> grace was... I made it. I made it. I had to make that decision. It's like, can I stop before I get to the tree? Or is at what point is throttle your friend until it isn't? I was really at that point. Here comes a two-ton snowmobile at you. Well, when, I took when, it off trail and went through breaking trail and it was floating and I was like I'm gonna get stuck but you just keep it just keeps going and pushing snow the bumpers pushing mm -hmm. it goes it's actually breaking trail and with a with a big sled like that I although surprised. I wouldn't want to get stuck no that was my biggest worry is if I'm like stuck back here I think I'll be spending the night yeah so speaking about getting stuck um, mountain slug segments <laughs> so uh, coming up after the break uh, we're gonna bring Tyler Swarm in who's our resident mountain expert He's a very talented rider. Talented guy. We just won't let that go to his head. But he's coming in after the break to talk to us about uh, really riding in the deep powder. All right, so welcome back. Uh, we got to get Tyler over to the table. Hey, what? Come on over. Boys, last time I saw you guys, you were stuck in my trenches. Here we go with a smack talk. Guy's always on a throttle. <laughs> That's right. I'm glad to see you put a curve in your hat. Oh yeah? Yeah, you're yeah. now welcome at the table. Yeah, it's a young little punk with that flat build the past couple of years. <laughs> so we've been talking a lot about how the 
snowmobile industry is really getting distilled down into the different types of riders. I mean, before I think you were an RMK guy, but now you might be a chaos guy. Absolutely. So talk to us about chaos, which is really, that's big news for Polaris this year, the chaos. Well, you are right. Uh, before I was strictly a deep snow rider, uh, tight trees, all that stuff. Now I'm finding myself wanting to jump off stuff, bounce off of obstacles and all that. And uh, the chaos was amazing. It fit my riding style just perfectly. I mean, I could still do all the stuff uh, in the trees, you know, maybe not as precise as the RMK, but the shock package, the whole sled together, really gets the job done. It's yeah. Crazy. Chaos is one thing, but let's uh, let's talk about uh, Skidoo and their Summit Expert, which is the new buggy for them, right? So, what's what's that like for a guy who really knows what to do and with it? Because we don't. Let's face it. We look good going up the hill on that, though. Yeah, it'll get us places, but we can't really make it do what it's Park supposed it, to. Park it, turn off. Have a conversation. Watch Tyler. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, there's a lot of great new features on that sled, such as the new ski stopper that allows the ski to not fold up so on a side hill you're not washing out it's more predictable you've got smaller diameter handlebars so you're not getting arm pump as much which is huge you know to stay in control yeah uh, you have an adjustable limiter strap so if you want to wheelie that thing you can wheelie all day long but if you want to keep your momentum to make it to the top of the hill and beat your buddy you just suck that limiter strap up and give her head and it sounds like Dan Sled, Wheelie King Dan over here. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that's really identifiable to that, it's got a little shorter tunnel on it yes. and no snow flap. Yeah. Is, does that really make a difference or is that just a, a hey look at me type of feature? It makes a big oh. difference for the guy behind you. Makes yeah. a huge yeah, difference for the true. guy yeah. behind you, yeah. that's right. It's just <laughs> pel get pelted, it throws us some big chunks. Yeah. yeah. But it really does add a lot of performance off trail. Um, one thing is with that shorter tunnel, when you are wheeling up and you're about to get stuck, having a longer tunnel, that's gonna dig into the snow and not allow you to maneuver that thing around. But yeah. with a shorter tunnel, I mean, anywhere, you just pull that thing up and spin it around and you're not getting as much drag in the snow with the tunnel. Is it something you have to learn or is it gonna come natural with a shorter tunnel? Is it uh, it'd, it'd come a little bit more natural, but you definitely have to learn it as well. Uh, having that snow flap gone though, it. It just, it's out of your way, you know? It's like all the cool kids are doing it. Take your snow flap well, off. Yeah. Like, is it like wearing be, a flat hat again? It used like, to be the old huh. saying, if your snow flap's sticking straight up, you had a good day. Just got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot, there's no a lot of places flat. you could go with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Alpha, yeah. though? No one's talked about the Alpha yet. The Alpha. Yeah, that throws another like, dog I just got back from Europe, Brian, and I swear all the Alphas are there. We were out there, Matt and I were out there, and there was like 100 Alphas. Like, I fell out of place because I wasn't on one. So it's like, there's deep snow, but you're not going on these crazy climbs. And so it's him to tell us about the Alpha. I, 100%. I'm backing out of that You circle. spent the most time on it. I yeah. Know. That, we couldn't get, actually couldn't get it away from it. No. <laughs> but you did have a good, you, you talked about overcorrection on the Alpha. Yes. So I would say that's more rider error just because I'm not used to the sled. However, that thing is extremely easy to ride. Uh, the overcorrection you mentioned, was probably just that flex edge track. Uh, I felt like sometimes I would get out of my line and to get back into my line, I would overcorrect it, overcompensate, and lose my line and have to loop out. But that just means I don't have to put as much input into the sled, and I'm not used to that. They're very easy to ride. That single beam works. Oh yeah, it, it is ridiculous how easy it is to initiate a side hill. Hold would it make Dan hill. look good? Oh yeah. I could Absolutely. stay with you guys? I could actually follow it? All day, buddy. Nice. All day. I, I was watching from the bottom. It was pretty amazing though, but I was watching from the bottom, like, <laughs> good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you can side hill across. Show me that again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it all comes back to being honest with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to figure out what type of sled you need for your situation, because it, it exists. There is definitely a sled out there for you to choose from. So just study your snowmobiles, get in there in the spring, get into your dealer, and snow check a sled. You'll be ready to rip. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> All right, guys, so last word of advice, what we're kind of taking away from model year 2020, what can we tell consumers that are, you know, right now trying to figure out what they're going to put their money down on? I think it's a bit confusing. So first thing you got to do is go see, talk to your dealer and have a serious conversation with yourself about what kind of rider you really are. Do you need the fancy shocks? Do you need some of these accessories? Do you need right. do a you 155? Really need 
Yeah, exactly. You gotta have talk yourself and be honest. Yeah, what type of snowmobiling are you doing? What kind of riding? <clears throat> Dan is longer is always better nowadays. There's no more 121s. 129s are they're pushing, they seem to be pushing going us. away. The manufacturers are pushing us into a longer sled. Yep. And it is. It's good. Better ride. It's a better ride. Okay. Yeah. It depends on what trails, because where I ride, some of the trails are really tight, so the longer sleds don't really apply. And we don't have the deep snow sometimes, right, Jeff? I mean, yeah. like where we're riding. But then we go up north, we go a little further, and we're into like four feet of snow. So maybe a 137 is where it's at, 144 for us. It is for us. I mean, we're in the media, and we get to come to snowshoot and try all the different things. And I kind of feel sorry for you know normal consumers who don't get the chance and the opportunities to do what we do and hop it's off. It's, it's so tough. But yeah. I, I think, Dan, you're right. you got to be honest with yourself about what type of rider you are, where you ride, and whatnot. And, and really, there, there, there's a sled for everybody out there, whether you're a uh, mountain guy, you know, kind of crossover guy, you've been from the Midwest, and, and for us, you know, Eastern Flatlanders, um, there's a sled out there for us. Uh, but yeah, we just have to be honest with ourselves as to what, uh, what's best suited. So on that note, I don't know if we solved a lot of issues here. Did we, we gave some advice, be honest yeah. with yourself. Absolutely. But, we confused uh, ourselves. We confused ourselves. <laughs> We've had long arguments in the hotel rooms about Models and uh, paint colors, paint colors, all that stuff. I still Engines. like the black SRX. Yeah, I like the blue SRX. So I do like the yeah. 850 motors. You like yeah. what do you like? Your your riot or uh, chaos guy now? Yeah, I'm kind of leaning more towards chaos. And uh, I mean, you just you just gotta like we talked about. See what type of riding you do. Even if you ride the same terrain with your buddy, you don't have to buy the same sled as your buddy. You might ride different than him in the same area. So. Get to your dealer in the spring, see what sleds they have, snow check one, and you will be happy next year. Any brand you buy, you're gonna be thrilled next year. Absolutely. I, I don't think we can say it any better than that. So, thanks for watching. I hope this helped. We'll see you next year. Right? Yep. STV has been brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. Stick around, because we're going to to tell you uh, that was the best one so far. It was. Yeah. Hey, Rich, you want to just try this camera? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you be the host of this? Because yeah. it's going to be much better. That's what I need to do. <laughs>